Welcome once again to the Gopher Ball Podcast. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Scott Mayo. we got Sports 25 to Life. Talking about hot hitters, cold hitters, trends, um, who's embarrassing themselves, who's hitting the ball well, things of that nature. So as we do, we'll start off here at catcher talking about Buster Posey, who has been absolutely incredible over the past couple weeks, finally looking like the guy that we knew he was, the hitter from the past. So obviously, like we've been saying all season, we knew he'd turn around. Still has that impressive 8.9% strikeout rate. 10.5% walk rate, batting uh, 304 now, up to 13 homers and 56 RBIs. I mean, he's up there. Stephen Volt was the guy who was kind of running away with top numbers at catcher, and then now all of a sudden, Posey's got just as many home runs. He's got more RBIs, more runs scored. Um, Volt's still walking 13.2% of the time, but batting 290. So Buster Posey, top option now, but, I mean, he's also priced like that. I mean, he's gotten some big price jumps, uh, especially on FanDuel where he's like, Mid four Ks now. Yeah, um, I mean Posey is the guy I've been playing cash games at catcher basically every day if I can if I can afford him. Yeah, um, I mean he's just been outstanding lately, and everyone else has cooled off quite a bit. I mean we got Derek Norris who started the year off really hot down to two thirty eight now. Um, Russell Martin's down to two sixty two. Hasn't been hitting very many home runs. Um, Salvador Perez has cooled off a ton. Brian McCann was hot for a while and he cooled off again. Um, and then we got guys like Yadi and Molina and Francisco Cervelli that are like, I mean, their batting averages are decent. They just don't give you anything else. I mean, they've got six combined home runs on the year. And, I mean, Cervelli has been okay lately. He's been a little bit more productive with the Pirates getting a little bit better. But, I mean, 26 runs, 28 RBI. I mean, he's just not a not a really impressive guy. He's only got a 107 ISO. Molina's got a .08 ISO. Um I mean, you want to stick to the top guys at catcher if you can in cash games for the most part, or unless you're going really, really cheap with some kind of like platoon matchup plays. But I mean, like I said, I play Posey as much as I possibly can. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, it's 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 hard not to um, the way he's been hitting the ball, and he's been worth his price tag more often than not, definitely. And then uh, Sal Perez, another guy, he's priced like a really cheap guy. He also has 13 home runs, only 34 RBI. He's been Mired down that seven hole a lot, but he's been batting fifth uh, recently. 1.8% walk rate you have to hate, but still only strikes out 13.8% of the time. So while he's not necessarily patient at the plate, he's putting the ball in play, batting 263. He's a guy that I don't mind going to in cash games, especially against a lefty on FanDuel where he's just really cheap. But he's priced up around 4K on DraftKings, which is just, I mean, unless you're playing him in a Royal stack, which is even hard to do in itself, then uh, he just really just doesn't have a whole lot of value there. Yeah, right. That's the big thing. And, I mean, it, it's so hard to stack the Royals because of the way their lineup's constructed. Like, they play a lefty, and they've got a bunch of lefties in the lineup. And then you play a, they play a righty, and then you're still dealing with these, like, right-handed bats like um, uh, Kane and stuff like that that are, like, I mean, he's a fine play against a righty, but he's always overpriced because of how well he hits lefties and his ownership percentage against them. So... They're always a really tough team to stack, which is why I, I rarely end up playing Salvador Perez. Yeah, and I mean, they're, they're a good offense, but they're another one of those ones like we talk about, like the Cardinals, where they're a very good offense, but there's not a lot of individuals that you like to target with that uh, um, by themselves. Um, looking at first base here, no surprise, Paul Goldschmidt still running away with it. 20 homers, 65 RBIs, 15 stolen bases. Once again, he and Mickey neck and neck, but... Um, as far as overall numbers, Goldschmidt really run away with it. Uh, both guys walking about as much as they strike out. Goldschmidt, 18.1% walk rate. just absolutely incredible. Uh, 352 average. I mean, he's doing it all. Mickey right behind him, 15 homers, 53 RBIs, 345 average. I mean, uh, those those two guys in themselves have been uh, just absolutely incredible. I mean, it's, it's such a significant drop-off. I mean, as far as actual first baseman, Buster Posey technically first base eligible here. But as far as actual first baseman, once you drop down below these guys, you've got Freddie Freeman and Anthony Rizzo, um, almost 50 batting points behind these guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's really not even close. If you can get those two guys in your lineup, it's a huge difference over the rest of these guys. I mean, Rizzo is probably the next best guy overall with 15 home runs, 12 steals, uh, 90 combined RBI and runs scored. Um, but he's just, I mean trailing significantly. I mean, even Cabrera overall is trailing significantly from what Goldschmidt's doing right now. It's not even really close. I mean, Goldschmidt's got 15 steals. He's got five more home runs than Cabrera, 12 more RBI, 13 more runs scored. 
um, his ISO's 50 points higher. It's just absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's having a monster season. I mean, just kind of like how he did last year. He's just been one of those guys that's been incredibly consistent. And then Anthony Rizzo, right, like we mentioned, not too far off as far as numbers. 12 stolen bases, 15 homers, 45 RBIs, um, 255 ISO, and almost a 300 batting average. Got to love that as well. Um, not too far below him, Adam Lind is the guy who has gotten the biggest price increase of any of these guys recently. Um, up to 12 homers, 46 RBIs. Obviously, doesn't even play against lefties very often. He's, he's the guy that hits righties, but batting almost 300 now. And um, the frustrating thing with him is he was a great cash game play when he was cheap, but now he's up, and he's he's priced right around guys like Votto and Jose Abreu. So, I mean, it, it's kind of tough to play him in your cash games now because we see him at 4K on Vandal, almost 5K sometimes on uh, DraftKings. So kind of really makes it tough to get him in your lineup more often than not. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the biggest problem there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple other guys to touch on here. A um, little bit lower. Albert Pujols still having no batted ball success. 221 BABIP, 291 ISO, batting 263, but 24 homers, 49 RBIs. I mean, this guy's just having a monster season. And we keep saying it that once this batting average, or once this BABIP catches up, I mean, he's just in line to have an even better year. So, I mean, who, the sky's the limit for him right now. And it's, it's crazy at his, at his age. I think he's, what, 36 now? He's getting up there, but I mean, among the league leaders in uh, ISO home runs, so uh, he's he's having a hell of a season, and he's not priced like these uh, these other guys up top. Yeah, I mean, there's some guys that are sneaking a little bit further down here that are really strong plays still. It's the same guys we've been talking about most of the year. That I mean, the the power is what makes these first base plays so good. I mean, Chris Davis had a two home run day recently. Edwin Encarnacion had a two run home run or a two home run day recently. Teixeira's got 19 home runs on the season. These guys are all hitting 230, 240, and they're still incredibly more used and more valuable than a guy like Eric Hosmer, who's been rock solid all year, but he just doesn't provide that upside with only eight home runs so far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I mean, he's another one of those guys that you, you like but you don't love, but he's cheap, so that's always good. And then uh, down all the way at the bottom, you got a couple guys: Chris Carter, Mike Napoli. The only thing these guys really are now are power hitters. Um, they hit a bunch of home runs, and they don't do really anything else. I mean, Napoli batting 199, Carter batting 198. So those two guys, great tournament options if you're chasing home runs, especially when Napoli's facing the lefty. But uh, Actually, when either of them are facing the lefty. But, I mean, that's two guys, doesn't matter how cheap they are. You really can't play them in your cash games. Uh, Napoli, when he was about men's salary at Fanduel, was an option. But he's now up near, near 3,000. There's no way you can play him in a cash game. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just too hard. I mean, with all the good plays at first base, I mean, you can go, you can get so much more solid. And even his upside is like around where some of these guys' like average games are at times. So it, it's tough to go cheap at first base most of the time. Yeah, and uh, if you watch our podcast, especially you and I, you know that we don't like to go cheap at first base hardly ever. Just usually too many options there. Yep. Um, second base, Jason Kipnis. He's still running away with them. He's 347. I know D. Gordon's at 345, but D. Gordon not having anywhere near the season that Kipnis is. Kipnis, not a ton of power. Kind of power number's a little bit down. 167 ISO, just six homers. But he's got 10 steals. He scored 55 runs, 35 RBIs. Um, I mean, he's having a hell of a season. You look down just a little bit past that, and the guy that nobody's really talking about, Joe Panic, up to 316. 146 ISO is respectable for a middle infielder. Six homers, 41 runs scored, and... That's a Giants offense that slowly over the past month or so has really started to get it going. And Panic's price is indicative of that, but at the same time, um, because of that, it makes him a really low-owned guy that you can uh, you can target in your uh, in your tournaments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's shown more power and stuff than I would have expected. I mean, it, Kipnis' ISO is 167. Obviously, he's not a big home run guy either, but he's been pretty solid in the extra base department. And Panic's at, right there at 146. I mean, it's pretty impressive that he's up there that high uh, for a guy that was like a fringe major league talent basically before this year. So, um, I mean, it's really impressive what he's been doing. And speaking of ISO, Brian Dozier is at 258 still, which is just absolutely incredible. 16 home runs on the year, seven stolen bases. He strikes out quite a bit, but I'll take that with the power you're getting out of a second base position where, I mean... He's the only guy in double-digit home runs besides Stephen Drew who's hitting 183. Yeah, yeah, seriously. And uh, Stephen Drew also bats like eighth or ninth all the time. And 
Um, obviously, Dozier leads off, but I mean, Dozier, when he plays a lefty, he's so far and above most of these guys as your top option on the slate. It's really not even close. Um, another guy that I know you and I have been liking to play a lot, and his price is still really cheap, Colton Wallen for the Cardinals. Um, batting 287, 170 ISO. He's got seven steals and nine homers, but 42 runs scored is even more important there. I mean, he's been one of the more consistent hitters for that team. And they've had some problems with injuries. I mean, Matt Carpenter missed some time. Matt Holliday's still out. Matt Adams still out. But Colton Wong's kind of carried the top of that lineup recently. So he's he just continues to be a really great option uh, in all formats right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, second base is one of those positions where there's a group of guys that's basically really strong in certain situations, and then there's a bunch of guys that aren't very good in any situation. So yeah. um, it's usually a position I try to include in a stack for the most part. Um, because if you're going away from that, um, I mean, it's, it's just really tough to hit on a standalone second base play. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you there. Um, other options at second base, uh, there's your Robinson Cano. He's still cheap, not quite the minimum like he was there for a little while, but still just not having a good season. I mean, 116 ISO, 244 batting average, and it's not like he's having terrible bat of all success. 282 is still below league average, but not awful. I mean, he's still that guy. He's had a little bit more success recently. You can consider him in your cash games when he faces a righty, but, I mean, you still just never feel good about it because he had that one huge game a couple of days ago. What was it, a home run? I think four RBIs, something like that. But, I mean, outside of that, he just hey, – no consistency with him. He's been a really frustrating player all year. Yeah, I mean, and no upside either is the big thing. Yeah. I mean, we've seen, what, I think it's three home runs in – 12 or so days now, 13 maybe, something like that. And it still doesn't feel like he has any upside. Yeah. I mean, the Mariners' offense has been so bad as a whole that he's only got 27 RBI in the season. He's been hitting basically third, fourth, fifth exclusively. I don't think he's hit below that more than once or twice. Um, I mean, it's just, it's been rough. Like, I'd, I'd much rather pay up to get someone like Dozier or Kipnis or whatever rather than pay half the price and get a lot of 0 for 4s from Cano. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's one of those situations where you put him in your cash games if, if it's a short slate and everyone else is on him, but that's about the only reason. I mean, you just you just kind of hope that he puts the ball in play. Not really a, a route that I like to take very often. <clears throat> you Moving over to shortstop here, Jose Iglesias continues to lead as far as batting average goes, but he's just not a guy that's playable. I mean, he bats ninth, doesn't have any power at all. Even... Still isn't even stealing that many bases. I mean, he's just, he's your defensive specialist there for the Tigers, why he's in the lineup all the time. Um, Troy Tulewiski finally up to 319. Still just eight home runs on the season, though. 41 RBIs, 40 runs scored. Kind of starting to get it going, but that 160 ISO, I mean, just not what we expect out of Troy Tulewiski. So he's going to have to continue to improve on those numbers. Still just 112 WRC plus, too. So, I mean, he's been above average, but not, not much. And he's still priced like a guy that's an elite hitter, and he has not been one this year. So the guy that I know I and you and a lot of other people have been playing a ton of cash games recently, Sandra Bogarts, still yep. really cheap, especially on FanDuel. Um, he's up to 297 on the season, doesn't have much power, 113 ISO, but he's got 34 run score, 35 RBI, so he's been batting third a lot for this Boston team. And like I said, this is a Boston team that hasn't been scoring a ton of runs, but when we saw the other day, they put up eight without before they got an out um, against Toronto. Yeah. So, I mean... Once they start to get it going, maybe once Justin Pedroia comes back, you know, he'll have some more RBI opportunities. But, I mean, he's he's been the main bright spot for that team. He's been really consistent. Yeah. Um, I mean, I still play Troy Tulowitzki way too much. I mean, he's still really expensive. He's been okay lately, like, kind of hard to complain about, but he's also hasn't done anything, like, super exciting either. I mean, only eight home runs on the season still, zero steals. 40-40 uh, RBI and runs scored. I mean, he's fine, but he hasn't been worth his price on most nights. Has been the tough part for me, and I, I always kind of default to playing him just because there's not really a ton of shortstops I like playing right now. You mentioned uh, Bogarts, who when he's hitting third in the lineup has been really solid. I mean, it's hard to argue with him, but he's not a guy that's going to give you very much power. He doesn't steal a lot of bases. He's just a, a solid average guy right now with with some decent run scored and RBI potential because of his batting slot more than anything. Um, Brandon Crawford's another guy that I play a lot, but his seventh spot in the batting order, sometimes sixth, makes it tricky because he's not in a good spot in a Giants batting order that's really not all that good anyway. Um, 
he'd be a lot more useful in the second or fifth hole or something like that. Um, Marcus Semien is a guy that has cooled off a ton since the beginning of the season. He's got seven home runs and seven stolen bases, but he's hitting ninth in the order. I mean, there's just not a lot of shortstops that hit in good spots in the order right now. I mean, we've seen Jimmy Rollins, who is still at the bottom of this, um, has his average up over 200 consistently, finally, which is nice. Um, with seven home for runs. For that. Yeah, but he's hitting eighth right in front of the pitcher all the time now. So now, even now that he's hitting pretty well, I think he's hitting like 310 over his last seven or eight games. Um, you can't use him because he's hitting right in front of the pitcher and right after, like, I mean, A.J. Ellis sometimes and, like, stuff like that. So, I mean, he's not even really that usable. Um, Segura, another guy that's really struggling, has been jumping between, like, first and eighth in the order for the Brewers, depending on what the what the pitcher looks like that day. He's hitting two fifty six, only 10 steals, which was the thing that made him so valuable last year. Um, I mean, there's just not a lot to love at shortstop right now. No, no, and that, that's pretty much it. All the guys that are notable, at least. Um, third base, completely different story. Tons of options there, as there always are. And uh, you look up here at the top, Yunel Escobar continues to lead as far as batting average goes. When he's about men's salary, he's an okay cash game option. He still bats third a lot of times in that Nationals lineup, but just not a guy you feel great about. He doesn't have any power, .087 ISO. Um, Mike Moustakis, similar type player behind him. A little bit more pop in his bat, though, 140 ISO, but similar numbers everywhere else. The guy who's everyone's been all over recently, and rightfully so, Manny Machado, absolutely crushing the ball right now. Up to 221 ISO, 302 average, 11 steals, 16 homers, 44 RBIs, 51 runs scored. I mean, he's been he's been your top option every night when it's not Josh Donaldson facing a lefty. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of Josh Donaldson, he's having himself a fine season as well. 19 homers, 60 runs scored for him, 52 RBIs, 241 ISO. But, you know, if you're looking across the board, pretty similar numbers to Machado. Um, Donaldson with a couple more runs scored, a couple more RBIs, but less stolen bases, so... Similar there, and then of course you got your power guys, Nolan Arenado, Todd Frazier, both guys almost identical numbers, 24 homers to 25. Um, Arenado has 68 RBIs though, Frazier with 54. Um, somehow Arenado has all those RBIs for a Rockies team that really hasn't been a very good offense this year. But uh, the ISO for these guys, absolutely monstrous. 324 for Arenado and 322 for Frazier. Both guys batting over 280, so you know, take your pick with these guys. Arenado's been quite a bit more expensive than Frazier recently. So, for me, it's been Frazier when he's at home, especially against the lefty. I've been targeting more. But Arenado, I mean, he had, what was it, three multi-homer games in the span of six games? I mean, it was absolutely incredible. So, yeah. I mean, the, those are your power surge guys to target right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you've covered most of the third baseman that I'm really liking right now. Um, I mean, I've been playing more cheap third baseman lately than I usually do. But... I like spending up on third base. It's a lot like first base to me right now where we have these top guys. You mentioned Donaldson, Frazier, Arenado, stuff like that. Uh, I think even Chris Bryant fits into that at times, depending on the matchup. He's still striking out a ton, though, which is concerning because, I mean, he wasn't a big strikeout guy in the minors. 30% still on the season is, like, incredibly high, yeah. um, which is weird because, like, you don't even hear people really talk about him as one of those big strikeout guys like Chris Davis or something like that, but... I mean, he's got a massive strikeout rate right now. A lot of them are looking, which is the scary part, because um, his batting average on balls in place is still 381. If he's just putting the bat on the ball more often, I mean, he could be easily hitting 300 right now. But, I mean, that's the way it, it works with guys like that, and maybe he like wouldn't be having such a high batting average on balls in play if he was more aggressive. So it's hard to argue with him on that. But uh, Aaron Ido is the guy that keeps sticking out to me he's hitting 287 on the season with just a 261 batting average on balls in play so i mean there's still a ton of room for him to grow and with 24 home runs on the year 68 rbi he's still got a ton of games and cores left to play i think it's more than half their remaining games by by quite a few um there's a lot to like there in the, in the second half of the season yeah yeah like you said i mean he's gonna be a guy that's gonna be really popular it's gonna be like you said without many cores games coming up there's gonna be a whole lot of uh, those fun nights where it's Get yourself some cores exposure and hope they go off, or um, get yourself some cores exposure and wonder if you should have more. So those are always really fun nights. I like those a lot. Get yourself a cheap pitcher, stack that game, hope your pitcher does uh, pretty well, and then usually pays off pretty nicely for you. Um, one other guy I want to mention, Chase Headley. Been batting second a lot right behind Brett Gardner. And Brett Gardner's been one of the better hitters in the game. We'll get to him in a minute, I'm sure. But um, I've been loving playing Chase Headley as a cheap 
third base option, especially on DraftKings, where he's been well under three thousand. Not DraftKings, I'm sorry, Fanduel, where he's been well yep. under three thousand dollars. I mean, hasn't been great, but batting two fifty two, thirty eight runs scored, eight home runs. I mean, as many doubles and singles plus steals that uh, Gardner's had this season. Anybody batting right behind him, I mean, you get a hit and you got an RBI right there. That's that's two Fanduel points off one single, and I mean. You're set paying off that cheap price tag instantly with one hit early. Yeah, he's definitely been solid, Um, especially when they're facing a righty at home. I mean, that whole Yankees offense has been pretty impressive uh, at Yankee Stadium because of how many guys they have hitting for the left side of the plate. And, I mean, it's just a great spot to be in with Teixeira and A-Rod behind him hitting well. I mean, that's that's just an ideal batting spot. I mean, he hasn't even been playing the entire season. He's a probably a good 30 at bats behind some of these or 30 plate appearances behind some of these guys. Um, he's got 38 runs scored on the year. I think he's going to have a nice second half too. I I'm a big fan of him the rest of the way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. He, he's been a great, a great source of value there. Um, I mean, that's a, it's a great easy way to get Brett Gardner in your cash games. If you really want is just play Brett Gardner. And unless there's an elite matchup like a Josh Johnson against the lefty, just pair him with Chase Headley your cash games, get that little one, two punch, a little bit of power, a little bit of speed. I mean, that's been a that's been a strategy I've been imploring quite a bit when they've been at home against the righties. So yeah, um, Louis Valbuena, we got to mention, home run or bust. I mean, literally half of his hits this season are either home runs or doubles. Two forty two yeah. ISO, one ninety seven batting average, one eighty three on balls in play. A lot of that's because I mean, you see a lot of flyouts from this guy, a lot of strikeouts. I mean, it's just. You know what you're getting with Bob Buena, but right now, I mean, his price has kind of gotten to that point where he's even hard to play in tournaments. I mean, he's over four thousand dollars on DraftKings, mid threes on FanDuel. When he was like twenty seven, twenty eight hundred, you love playing him in tournaments. But even right now, I mean, you're paying a premium for him that you could be paying on a guy that's a lot more consistent. Um, outfield options here, um, no surprise here at the top, Bryce Harper. Maybe you think he's not producing still. He's still producing. He's just not on one of those torrid home run stretches. At 24 homers, 58 RBIs, 367 ISO, um, 18.1% walk rate you have to love. Um, he got a little stern talking to from uh, his uh, from Matt Williams the other day for not hustling. Looks like he flew out to, I think it was left field, and just kind of stood at home plate and didn't even run. So maybe a little arrogance as usual with him. But, I mean, can you, I don't know how much you can really blame the guy when you're as good as Bryce Harper. Maybe you'd be a little arrogant. Air- Arrogant there, just whatever it may be. Um, his teammate only two spots behind him there, batting 310. Denard Span, awesome cash game play when he's facing a right handed pitcher. Um, he's got yeah. 11 steals in the season. He doesn't strike out 9.4% of the time. So uh, he, he's a guy that I really like to target in my cash games. Yeah, let's not skip over Nori Aoki continuing to be one of the better batting average guys in the league. Um, he's been a really strong cash game play, especially on FanDuel, where he's basically well under 3,000 every day. And he's reaching base pretty much once a game, if not a little bit more than that. His on-base percentage is pretty nice, uh, 383. He's got 12 steals. I mean, not a guy you want to play in GPPs for upside or anything, but I mean, he's a guy you can plug in your cash games, and five out of six days he's going to do enough for you that you're happy you put him in there. So um, I think he's a strong cash game play most of the time. Mike Trout's been surging lately a little bit. He's up to 21 bombs on the year, 57 runs scored. Um I mean, his biggest problem and Pujols' biggest problem continues to be that no one around them in the lineup is hitting, and they don't, just don't have any other bats, really. I mean, they, they keep hitting high bar at the top of the order, and he's been okay but not really doing anything really that impressive. And, I mean, Charlotte's only got 44 RBI on the year, and he's basically been hitting second or third every single night and is hitting 303 with a near 400 on base percentage and a 286 ISO, which is just crazy. I mean, 44 RBI on... 21 home runs is just depressing. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, that, that's the issue. It's not for lack of hitting because he's been hitting the ball really well. It's just been the offense around him, and uh, it's, it's unfortunate. But uh, I don't know. Maybe they try to make themselves a move for the deadline. Maybe they bring another bat. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, another and guy. Nelson Cruz oh, is having that same problem. What, what's that? Nelson Cruz is having that same problem. Yeah. He's got 20 home runs, 48 RBI. I mean, none of the Mariners are doing anything. He was red hot to start the year, yeah. cooled off for a while, and then he's got hot again a little bit. Uh, over the last couple weeks here, but I mean, he's having the same problem. Only 39 runs scored on 20 home runs seems ridiculous too. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that number in itself. I mean that's that's insane. And like you said, it's not like he's not getting on base. 392 OBA. So I mean, it's 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 a frustrating situation for him. But uh, another guy's been a really great cash game play. Gerardo Parra. 
He's uh, yeah. batting 300. He's got his numbers just overall are just very good. They're not great. 300 batting yep. average, 154 ISO, um, five homers, five steals, 33 runs scored. He usually leads off when they face a right-handed pitcher, especially when they're in a good ballpark, Miller Park, Great American, place like that. So, I mean, you really got to like him as a cash game play. He's, he's still pretty close to men's salary despite producing really well recently. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, another guy that's been pretty similar to that uh, – was the oh Ben Revere is the other guy that I've been looking at lately that's been really similar to that. And he has a little bit more upside, especially on DraftKings with the stolen bases. He's got 19 steals on the year now. He's the one Phillies guy that's really gotten their offense going a little bit, hitting 289 on the year, um, getting on base quite a bit. He's not striking out very much, 9.8 percent strikeout rate, which is like we talked about with D Gordon at the beginning of the season. It's great to see with guys with speed. Um, he's got 43 runs scored on offense. He's got more runs scored than Nelson Cruz and has 19 less home runs than him. Um, Which is I mean, he, yeah, he's he's just another one of those cash game plays that I think you can run out there most days and be pretty happy with if you hit if you get the starting pitcher right. And I mean, there's a lot of outfielders like this, and it's nice to be able to like fall back on those guys when you realize you can't get up to the guys like Brett Gardner and uh, Denard Span and stuff like that who are like really premium plays. Yeah, and you mentioned that one home run that Ben Revere has did hit off Max Scherzer, so he had his one shining moment for the year, too. So something to tell his grandkids about, because I think he's got something like five home runs in his career. Um, Jason Hayward's another guy who's been really hitting the ball well recently, 283 now, um, nine homers, eight steals, up to 37 runs scored. Still not a guy that um, you necessarily feel great about in cash games, because the price is starting to creep up, but definitely a guy you got to keep your eye on, especially in a good matchup um, in your GPPs. And then... Um, after that, we'll go ahead and look towards the end here. About to wrap things up here. Look at some guys who are really struggling. It's always interesting to see which Reds player is going to be down at the bottom because it seems like that's who it always is. There's always a uh, always a Reds player down at the bottom. Um, right now, though, it looks like Steven Souza down at the bottom. He's having a really bad last month, but still has 14 home runs and 10 stolen bases on the season. So, but a 35% strikeout rate. So, when he hits the ball, when he puts the ball in play, he's an okay option. But, uh, I mean, this is a guy that's really, really hard to play right now. Yeah, really hard. I mean, you've got to, like, really – I mean, you to play him right now, you have to assume you're not getting any points and hope that you're going to get yeah. a big game. It's all it really is. And I hate playing guys like that where, like, I just don't feel confident in it whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. And another guy who's similar to that, uh, Billy Hamilton, was back up at near the top of the order. I had four steals in a game last week. Um, dropped back down to the nine spot. I saw a bunch of uh, Reds fans complaining about that, but I mean, the guy just doesn't get on base. He's got a 258 wall block yep. season. He just, he's a terrible hitter. I know he has 40 stolen bases. If the guy could get, learn to get on base, he'd steal 100 bases every year. But, I mean, you don't just become a good hitter overnight. The guy needs to, uh, he's never going to be a power guy, obviously. He weighs about 64 pounds. But, I mean, he, just, he, he needs to work on getting on base because, I mean, he could be a legitimate threat. We saw that day we had those four steals. Reds put up a big number. I mean, he was on all the winning GPP rosters that night because, you know, I mean, that's 20 DraftKings points or eight FanDuel points just off steals. So, yep. luckily for him, he walked a bunch of times in that game. But just just one of those guys that, you know, you want to play him because he's got that stolen base upside, but you just have zero faith in him ever getting on base. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, 40 steals makes it feel like you should be playing him a lot more than you really probably should because the games that he doesn't get on base, he just doesn't do anything. I mean, you're yeah. just taking minus points there and it, it, it's really hard to do even with that upside so he's relegated to a gpp play for me all the time and it's got to be even in the really good situations for me there um another guy that's in the same situation for different reasons jock peterson his average is all the way down to 243 um continues to be a solid gpp play that i use quite a bit with 20 home runs 45 runs scored i mean the iso is incredible at 281 but He's just really hard to play at times because he has a lot of over four days with three strikeouts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. He's he's uh he's a guy that sometimes when you see his price down, you see a lot of people on him in cash games, and uh, it's frustrating to me because I don't see him as a cash game play. But especially on Fanduel where he was cheap, you know everyone's going to be on him when they they played him against Robbie De La Rosa, some other scenarios like that. And I mean situations like that, you're almost forced to put him into your cash game lineup just to uh because if he hits a home run. That uh, you're you're behind pretty quickly, so definitely an interesting option. And Jock Peterson, but uh, that's gonna wrap things up. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.